take us back to November of 2018. You're living near Nashville. You're the number three at Nissan, trusted lieutenant of CEO Carlos Ghosn, an automotive superstar in many ways. Your phone rings. It's Hari Nada, the head of the CEO's office calling from Japan. He asks you to come to Yokohama, Japan. Come to the headquarters, ASAP. Tell me about that day and the days that followed. Well, I actually didn't get a call from Harry. Um, my executive assistant in Japan put on my schedule a trip to Japan, and that was very unusual because I didn't have a clue uh, why they wanted me to come to Japan. So I called uh, Harry in Japan and could not reach him. And then I contacted Carlos Ghosn's executive assistant, Famiko Doi, and asked her if she could find Harry so we could have a discussion. Harry called me back, and I said, you know, what's the schedule for me to go to Japan? And he said, we need you here for an urgent meeting. Uh, it really needs to be face-to-face. -face. And I reminded Harry, I said, you know, Harry, I've got uh, neck fusion surgery coming up in less than a month. And why can't I do this on video? And at the close of the call, we agreed to get back to each other. A few days later, uh, Harry and I had a discussion again. You know, and I told him, I really don't understand why I need to come to Japan. Uh, I can do anything we need to do on a video. But he thought it was very important uh, for me to be there. And so he actually said, I'll fly you to Japan on a charter flight. Hmm. Now, I'd never flown on a charter flight across the ocean. I've flown all over the world, but, you know, it was primarily commercial. And he said, look, uh, I'll get this charter flight, and I'll get you back in three days before Thanksgiving and in time for your pre-op appointment with your doctor. And I got on the plane, went to Japan. And now, was, for, for you, that, that was, first of all, highly unusual. Because, as you said, you've, they've not done this for you before. Right. What was, the, what was the reason? Were you given any reason beyond this sort of nebulous, I need you here now? Before we get back to this interview, I want to say that this episode is brought to you by Connected, by Reynolds & Reynolds. If you want to hear great conversations and Greg Eulen going deep with guests on everything from used car acquisitions to finding your niche and selling to it, I recommend adding Connected to your podcast rotation. Now let's get back to my interview. Yeah, he, Harry felt that the meetings we were going to have really needed to be in person. Were so significant. Yeah, yeah. That's, what, that's what he thought. And so I got on a plane, uh, and instead of three days later, it took over three and a half years for me to get back home. Wow. What happened when the plane landed? When the plane landed, uh, I was escorted by the folks that met me to a van with a driver. And again, for me, this was a new experience because I'd always just gotten on the train into Tokyo, the Narita Express, or taken a, a bus with other people. So I got in a van, and I'd say it was about 20 minutes. I was on an expressway in Japan, and the driver informed me he had to pull over and call his family. And that's really unusual. In Japan, when somebody's got a task, they usually don't interrupt in the middle of a task. But I said, okay, that's fine. And the moment we pulled off the road, uh, five individuals climbed in the van uh, and started to ask me about Carlos Ghosn's compensation. Uh, and then they took me to the Kosugi Detention Center, which was about an hour away. Five individuals climbed in the van and started asking you about Carlos Ghosn's compensation on the side of the road. That's correct. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I was shocked. To say the least. At that point, you knew that. What? What? When were you informed that you were arrested? I was never formally informed I was arrested. They just said you're going to come with us. Uh, so they took me to the detention center. I was strip searched. Uh, I was interrogated, and then put into solitary confinement. So I guess at some point, officially, I was arrested, but. You know, nobody ever said that. No conversation with a lawyer, no conversation with anyone else. You're, 
your wife Dee sitting here in studio with us? Well, uh, at that time, again, as I told you, I was shocked. I didn't know what was going on, but I also didn't understand the system in Japan. Mm -hmm. And what I was about ready to enter into in the system was a, an experience where I would not have a lawyer with me when I was being interrogated and I could have no communications with the outside world. So you had no communication at all for how many days? I was in solitary confinement for 37 days. Uh, about the fifth day, I finally met some attorneys that might I might retain. Uh, and once I retained an attorney, I was able to meet with that attorney. But other than that attorney, I had no contact with the outside world. 